Listen, y'all are sitting out there saying, hey, that's probably the worst guitar I ever seen. Guess what? It's not. It's not. You're fixing to find that out. Um, welcome to this episode. I'm going to call chaos because it's going to be utter chaos. I want to give a shout out to my friends at Chaos Records in Covina, California, cultural capital of the world. I went down there on record day and I got this record day release of Canned Heat, Living the Blues. Uh, this is a redo of the 1967 album. I have the 1967 album and I think most renditions thereof because I am engaged in a structural weight capacity test of the floor where I store my records. So where was I? Anyway, Chaos Records West Covina, California. Go down there. I already got all the good stuff, but they might have something you like by Justin Beaver or something like that. Anyway, um, they're a good record store in, in spite of some of these CD uh, record company labels that they have. So anyway, we're going to put this one up. Somebody that we all know and love. Uh, retired this and sent it home to Tammy and uh, there's some major advancements on this one you see this why you need a three-way switch this is going to get in the way you're playing away you're you're doing some of the best music and then all of a sudden your arm hits this or you're violent playing or whatever you're doing when you put a slide on things are going to get crazy um, yeah you don't need that you don't need no F holes here because if you put this thing by the amp it's going to feed back you hear that? So the F holes are covered up, keeping Ace Hardware in business with that neck reset. Yeah, this is some good stuff. Anyway, oh yeah, look at that. Look at that neck fix. Isn't that incredible? That's Lutherism at its best. Of course, we got that Eli Green hoodoo, hoodoo something or other. There's a little bit of electrical problem here. I don't know what it is. Anyway, let's unplug this thing. Because it's definitely not the worst guitar you've ever seen. But I'm going to show you one of the worst guitars you've ever seen. Right here, this fine specimen. Now I have two like this. Single cutaway. This is an old craftsman. Gallia Volt. Do not covet this. I know about you and old craftsman, but I won't tell nobody. Anyway. You know this guitar as the East LA Cutaway. Laurent Bompard helped us make this fancy uh, pick guard. But there's two of these here. They're both made by the K Company. They're both K-1 model. One's labeled Old Craftsman. For the Spiegel catalog, when you were little, the rich kids got Spiegel presents while we got I don't remember what we got. I probably didn't get nothing. That explains all this. Anyway, we're going to take this guitar, which is probably one of the worst guitars you've ever seen, and we are going to put a set of Gibson gold. Mike Tyson's coveting this stuff right now. Gold pickups. Expensive, high-dollar, high-end pickups. And people are going to say, why would you put something like this on something like that. Well, you know what? I'll decide what's going on here. This is my channel, and I set what cool is, and you know that. So you just sit there and do what you're told and be fortunate that you're allowed to be my subscriber. That's right. So what we're going to do is I've marked this thing up to cut the pickups in it. And I'm going to show you a couple of pitfalls along the way when you start cutting into these things because arch tops aren't just pretty, they're functional. There's things inside of here that you might think are braces or actually tone bars. We're going to talk about that. 
in the interest of time, I have marked this one up so we know we're going to cut here and here. And we're going to use this one to show you how to find the tone bars, not sound bars, tone bars, braces and things like that. And what we're going to need to do when we cut those out, because they're in the way on this one, trust me. So we're going to hop back and forth between these two. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's get to the bench. This doesn't sound that good with this tape on the strings. Anyway, let's go. All right, here we go. Again, the idea is we're going to put two pickups on here. One up at the neck. One down at the bridge. Okay. Um, they are going to go in a framework that allows you to adjust the pickup up and down. Now, you notice that I found the center of that already. But these fit around here. This is going to be a template for us. Now, we're going to get a couple things out of the way first because the size of these and how wide they are may interfere with some stuff we got going on inside the body. The first thing I want to tell you is this. Remember this fancy Beverly Hills, California yardstick that I got for measuring scale. And one more time, I told you this a million times, I'll tell you a million more. Scale on a guitar is measured from the back of the nut, not the center of the nut, not the tuner side of the nut, but the nut. And you can see here that it goes to the 12th fret. You measure the 12th fret, you put a mark, that mark is right there. And then you double that and you come down here and you see that mark right there? That is where it goes. That's where the bridge goes. Now, there's going to be a light tilt to it about the thickness of the big string in comparison to the small string. That's the mechanics of it. But you'll see people, oh, it lines up with this part of the F hole, uh, whatever. No, we're not doing witchcraft here and praying and hoping. We'll put that there. Now, I've ran across guitars where you go to do work on them and you're making the assumption that the bridge has been set in the right place and it's not. So the first thing I want you to do is find out where this goes and then we're going to tape this off and we'll be sure to know that that bridge is in the right place. All right, when it comes to marking this off, I got this painter's tape here. I'm going to put one there. I'm going to put one over here and then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark the center of where this goes. Now I'm going to do that outside of here so I can always keep this now. If you're working on some fancy guitar like the pretty boys play, you're going to want to use low tack tape like this white tape because if you leave this on here in a hot shed, this kind of stuff, you're going to peel up the finish where this stuff comes right off. It serves its purpose. It's also available in a tack that's called how sticky the stuff is. An attack rating. This orange is between white and this blue stuff. So that stands up good. Again, it doesn't want to stick. So uh, take advantage of that to protect your service. Okay. All right. So let's pop in the one I got done here. Like so. I have marked where this bridge goes. See that? There we go. When I pull this tape off, I'll know exactly where this goes. Now, next thing is, I want to find the center of the guitar. Because I'm going to line up this casing. I've marked out the center, so I want to know where that is. Now, I'd like to take this off, but I won't. So here's what we do. We take some thread, like this. We tie a a loop in it like so you know I used to be the calf roping uh, champion in Texas not really I was a duck duck goose champion state champion in, in Wisconsin so it's kind of the same thing but you loop this around your end pin down here and you run it up the center and then you mark it the center of the fingerboard down there and the center up there where the nut is. Then you tape it down. You want to know where the center of the guitar is. 
and if you look closely there's a piece of that black thread with marks everywhere here that is why this tape is on these strings now once I have that I can extrapolate that down into marks on top of the guitar that tells me where the center is once that's done I can take those marks and lay this right here and line up those center marks you see that right there and then back here of course you're gonna have a preference of how far away you want the neck pick up from the neck and the bridge pick up from the bridge so I had the artist mark that out and they're gonna end up being here so let's get a saw and start cutting right wrong okay so let me give you a little hint here when people start building fine arch tops like this one or even better they start worrying about how things are braced if there's uniformity in the thickness of the wood going around tap testing making the tone right making sure that the thickness of the wood is just right because if it's too thick uh, this runs off a cubed effect where you take the difference between this thickness and this th thickness and multiply it by itself by that result by that result anyway if you want to get into some high dollar theory and how things work i want you to see a video that Ken Parker did about arch tops right up there right about now it's got all kinds of history and stuff stick with this guy he's brilliant and um, he certainly gets my endorsement from uh, somebody that works on stuff like this anyway Ken Parker will tell you is it inside of these guitars or something called a tone bar it is it looks like a brace and it's shaped to the top of the guitar now when people were blowing these guitars out for $18 and $25 for the Sears or Spiegel catalog, they weren't real picky about this. So they put them in here. One of them rides the bass side. One of them rides the treble side. And they would tune them so one has more wood on it than the other and stuff. So they're not just braces. What you see is in here is tone bars. And when you cut through them, you will mess up. The tone of the guitar maybe that's why they're called tone bars so you see these things taped to the guitar here these are some high dollar tools that I made myself and they are going to help us find whether you want to call them braces or tone bars or whatever where are they and do they have a spot inside this guitar that is going to get in the way if I have to cut this much out to put this in and since I can't see inside, I don't want to use mirrors and lights and who knows what. I'm going to show you a quick way to find out, identify where these are at and how thick they are and how likely it is that you're going to have to cut through them or partially or what. Okay, so I have these off. I'm going to set this aside. We'll bring it back. Imagine if I spent my whole life marking this up while you sat there doing nothing but watching me. So, first thing I want to know is if I stick this in here, is there going to be a tone bar out of in the way? So can you see me? Yeah. So I put a bend in this. I got a couple pieces of tape on here. I put this like this. And on this guitar, that tone bar is right there because that's where it stops. Okay. So I'm going to take a pencil or a magic marker. A little magic marker is best like maybe this one and I'm gonna put a mark on that piece of tape right there and then I'm gonna label this that okay this is the base side where the ones are at I'm gonna go around the likelihood that this is going to be equidistant over here is slim I'm gonna do the same thing over here I'm gonna mark that one and you can see from the marks on this that this one is different level in than this one so you want to know that you extrapolate that into laying your tape marks out and then you simply take the marks that you had and you know that this one is right here and that mark 
is right here. It's marked out. So am I going to hit the tone bar? Well, the mark is right there, and the edge of this is right there. So yeah, on this side, not quite as bad, but still almost all the way through. So I don't know how thick the tone bar is. Is it this thick, this thick, or what? So I'm going to show you another little trick. Look at this. It's got a hook on it, and it's got another piece of tape. So I put this in. I let this ride right underneath the top, and I push it in until it stops. I make a mark after this crashes to the floor. I would hate to have this fine quality instrument crash to the floor. Um, unless it crashed the floor on this side and crack it like this. I'd want the same thing over there for the sake of uniformity. Anyway, let's do that again. I got that hook. And we'll put this in. It's going to stop at the tone bar, see? Look at that. Boom. And I took the liberty of making this mark ahead of time. I already know where that is right here. But now the hook comes in. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to go past the tone bar and hook it. And that tone bar, the thickness of it's going to stop. Follow me? I'm hooked on the other side now. We'll make a mark there. And what do you know? That tone bar or that brace or that strut, whatever you want to call it, is that wide. I lay that out up here and I know I'm going to have to cut all the way through that. So, at the end of the day, I know where the center is. I know where these are. I know where my tone bars are, and I can also figure out by fishing around with this piece of coat hanger if there's anything else I need, cross braces, anything like that. And that gets extrapolated up to here with a couple pieces of wire, some tape, and a marker. So that's the setup on this. Now we're just going to get crazy. We're going to start cutting holes in here, and I'll try to catch you up along the way on what we're doing. All right, there we go. Um, we found our tone bars, and of course we knew where they were already. But one of the things we did discover here is that they are running at an angle. They're not running straight. So if we follow this angle down by running this edge, we'll be able to follow that through and figure out that we may hit less of it out here, and we'll know what to encounter. But I'm going to take this chisel and clean everything up. And then what's going to end up happening is on the back side where the pickup is going to be, I will be able to tilt the brace coming in here like this once I know where everything is going to be cleared by this gadget here. Then I think I'm going to put a piece of metal over here like I did on the Texas junk pile. Have you seen the Texas junk pile? Well, I'm going to give you a link to it right up there. Where am I? Right about now. There we go. And I'll put a piece of metal back here. That way when the threads dig in. But you can see here that those tone bars are right in the way of what we're going to do. And then I need to cut this a little bit more when they're out of the way. Okay, guys, we got our first hole roughed in here, and rough is the right word for it. I don't like leaving things all jagged and weird. It, it doesn't speak to good craftsmanship as much as necessary on one of these things. So it's time to figure out how do we flatten stuff out that's down in here. It appears to us that maybe you need something flat. when actu In actuality, you need something round. So it's time to put on our thinking caps here. And I'm going to show you a couple little tricks that I use for this stuff, a little, few little gadgets. The first thing is, how do you get something square in here? Well, one of my favorite friends is these mini hacksaw blades, because I can push this down in here like so, and I can go back and forth till I get a spot. Now, see, it's trying to dig in right there. So the trick to this is, if I'm going to get, if I can get a 
something started right there where the blade is digging in under there, it'll flatten that out nice for me. We can use sandpaper. We can use 400 grit sandpaper, fold it up, and do this all day long, and that's effective. Or we can use something round to get into a square hole round peg in a square hole this will work you would think that when this spins it's going to make something round well it will if you do this but if you approach it from this angle you'll see that rather than going like this if i go like this i'm going to square around off that corner i don't want that i want that corner to be nice and square so if i approach the work like this it actually will square that corner off here for me both on this side and this side now couple ways to approach that you can use a smaller drill like this lay it down on its side and you see there that also works really good for this bracing you kind of stabilize it keep the speed low and you can see what it's doing these are diamond tipped they're great now best way to use those is you've got these rotary tools this is a good one it's multi-speed at variable speed um, and it allows you to turn it up turn it down it lets you wear off these edges like so hey if you need any dental work or prison tattoos i'm your man anyway it allows you to get down in here like this. You can turn this corner like this. See that? Fits right down in there. It actually squares things off nice like so. And then the most important thing is you can go underneath like this and get the burrs off the edges. Now, that's going to be really important for us. Right here in a few minutes because you can see there's a crack right there now I've cut this this brace is a little loose so I'm going to glue this up but I'm actually going to take a piece of cigar box cut it to match this angle slip it up underneath here and glue this and if I've got a bunch of burrs along these edges when I go to glue this in and clamp it those burrs are going to stop this from setting right. So I'm going to be able to clamp this here and here. I'm going to put one in here. Once we get the tape off, you're going to see that there's a lot of cracks in this guitar or have been. We're going to fix those, but you're never going to be able to tell they were stabilized because, again, the artist wants this to look as junky as possible. So we're going to go along and get those burrs off like this, get these corners set because the bottom line on all of this is this needs to sit down in here let's just get that out of the way and it needs to sit flat like so I don't need it being up and down and all over the place now I've got this fancy piece of virtually half inch by 36 inch 16th inch thickness piece of aluminum stock I got at a hardware store I just set it on the frets like so and I can tell that this pickup is about right. It's bouncing a little bit, balancing right there a little bit, which tells me I've got some work to do on this brace right here, and I'm going to do that. Finally, nothing like a great chisel. This one comes out of uh, Switzerland, and just keep it sharp. Don't try to take off too much at once. You get things worked down with your blade. You come in at an angle like this. Or like this and then fish it, finish it off with this and then finally your 400 grit anyway we'll get this wrapped up um, we'll get this stuff glued up and then finally the last thing I want to tell you about is you don't want to leave this uh, raw wood like that so we have these staining pens they come in different colors golden oak dark walnut um, I have different colors here this is all going to be hid but um, that doesn't matter much to me, but I can take one of these. They have this tip right here. You just press it down and load it. These things have a chiseled edge, so you got pretty good control over it. See there? And you just go along 
and cover up that wood. And maybe there's a little piece of dried wood over in this area. We'll put a little cloud by it and um, make Bob Ross happy. Okay, guys, on this side of the brace, let me check the camera and make sure we can see. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see what's going on here um, per se, but you can tell I'm pushing down and this is loose. And you can see this as I push this brace down. It's loose up here. You can see it flexing there and there. I do not want that. I really don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of 400 grit sandpaper. I'm going to push down and I'm going to put that in there. See how far that goes up in there? It's detached. I let go and I pull it. Okay. I'm going to line it up, make sure it's lined up with the axis. Now I'm going to pull up from the bottom and I'm going to pull that like that. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of sandpaper, uh, debris there on my sandpaper, but I'm going to keep doing this and my sandpaper will be clean and then, you see, it's sanding that off level. I'm going to glue this and I don't want it to be rough in there. And this is kind of the way you'll see somebody like Ken Parker sanding for a bridge but yeah that's good then we're going to take our same piece of sandpaper tear a couple pieces off like so we're going to take our glue bot watch how this works this thing is awesome you just squeeze it and you watch that going up there and you got great control we're going to put a little bit of glue right there now we know this piece of sandpaper will fit underneath there glue side up push down on there now, I've tried to use the other side because there we go I let go I don't pull up and I pull it out the glue comes off I'm going to take another piece do the same thing see there I'm going to flatten it out and now I'm going to turn it over like this glue on the bottom side now and I'm going to do the same thing let it sit there pull it out like so I'm going to take a little bit of my not sticky stuff and I'm going to take one of my plethora of clamps I have and just do that right there and we're good to go. All right, guys, let's catch up. This looks rather complicated, and yeah, I've had to use my head on this part. So, what I do? Well, the tone bars are intact. I didn't have to cut all the way through. Of course, I want to tie them to each other. That kind of defeats the purpose. Well, putting pickups in an arch top completely defeats the purpose. Did you know that the depth of an arch top body here was decreased when they put pickups in because this depth causes that terrible feedback that causes people like Troy Murrah to cover up the F-holes with tape. Anyway, moving along, 
once we started tearing this thing apart, we figured out there's a crack running right there. Been there for a long time, all the way to the end of the body. Now, there's also a crack running here along the tone bar. So when this starts to crack and this bridge is pushing down, we've talked about load isolation and all that. So, you can tell when I push down here, you see that moving? Trust me, it's moving. If I put this back together, put this bridge here, and put the weight of these on here, this is probably going to cave in at some point, or it's going to affect how the pickup sits. So, what I've done is I've taken my favorite cigar box, not to build a cigar box guitar out of, but a Scott Goodwood, and I've rounded the edges of these off because the top is arched, it curves, you put a fat, flat piece of wood under there, it's just going to cave the middle even worse. But this one will glue in underneath here. You can tell that they're angled. This one will glue in under here, and this one will glue in under here, and they will fit between and abut the tone bars. That will make everything solid. Okay, we're waiting for glue to dry. Once that happens, these bracings inside, then we're going to go ahead and take a look at these cracks. But while we're waiting for glue to dry, um, I want to point out a little dilemma I have. This guitar is going to have two pickups, one known as the neck, one known as the bridge. Usually, you can tell the difference between them based on a packaging well there wasn't anything on the packaging that said they were different and B we know that the width of the neck gets wider as it goes down and the strings would tend to follow that so in other words let me turn this where are we at there we go we're getting all kinds of cockeyed here okay the nut is this wide the bottom of the fretboard is that wide so it would stand that it gets wider as you go down there we go now that would mean that the poles here that line up with the strings would be wider on the let me make sure i got both those in here on the pickup that is towards the bridge so one way of doing it would be to measure and this is where the metric system comes in handy, metric hater, because the measurements are more precise. So I would go from the center of the pole, the first pole, to the center of the second set, or the outer pole, and I've got 50 millimeters. Now I could measure between and figure out what that is, so it's about 10 millimeters between. That makes sense. So... If I go to this one and it's the bridge pickup, they should be a little bit wider because that angle makes it for wider. And we'll look at that, they're the exact same. And so these pickups are both the same, be it bridge or neck pickup. So what do we do now? Well, we want the hotter of the pickups, the one with the most uh, whatever you want to call it. We've got a rhythm a pickup that's just kind of for strumming along and that one usually goes up on the neck. Um, the bridge pickup is the one that's more twangy and loud and crazy. So what we do is we take this little gadget here. Um, it's a multimeter. We turn it to ohms. It's that sign that looks like an up upside down U with the tops pointing out like a horseshoe. We turn it to 20. We want to turn it on. It's good to have it on. This pickup has one wire 
right there, just one wire, and the ground is the shielding. So we're going to take the one wire, we're going to wrap it around the red. Let me get where you can see this. Of course, we have the leads, the orange lead, plugged in here to the ohms, and then black goes to common. And then all we do is make sure we're not touching anything and touch the black lead to the ground. And we have 9.24, 9.25. We do the same thing with the other pickup. We attach the red to the one wire. We don't touch the other one. And we have 8.25. Floating right around 8.28, 8.28. So this pickup here is the least hot. This one is the most hot. So what we do is we just turn them over. We write the number down of what our ohms reading was. And that way we know the hottest one goes towards the bridge, the one that is not the hottest one goes up the neck. Real simple. Okay guys, more while glue is drying stuff. Um, you should be able to see that there's enough room around here. Let me grab my pointer just in case. But around here, I don't want to just screw um, the keeper for the pickup into the wood right here with all these cracks and the work I've had to done. So do, excuse me. So what I do is I build surrounds like this that these go, pickup goes through it like that. Um, notice that the, it's meant to be put on after this gets down the body so I don't need those tab ends to stick out. And then this sits over the top of it and I'm going to drill some screw holes wherever the corresponding holes are and where the adjustment hole is it ties in to that part for the pickup so it raises up and down so in addition to the screws that will screw in here i will also have a couple of screws out here out into this part of the body so it stabilizes everything now i'm going to um, paint this up and scuff it up so it doesn't look like worms first day but it starts off with a piece of metal like this cut the center off get everything done and then grind off the edges and stuff i've also used anything from premium cracker tins to uh pet boys cans or whatever to make these surrounds but they work out good and you don't have to depend on just the wood to hold the screw this metal takes threads better and retains threads better okay guys we got all the bracing in underneath everything is much more solid um, the glue is dried now the surrounds are done we talked a little bit about that um, there's not a lot of room between the bridge and the pickup so there's a longer side and a shorter side on both of those um, again we're gonna dress these out and age them a little bit but here's the deal the artist wants this guitar to look just like it is all scuffed up but We've got these cracks here. We've got them stabilized here. But what I want to do is we've fixed cracks before. I think I'll give you an episode if I got a card left. Let me get over here. That episode will be right up there right about now. But anyway, we are going to take a little binding tape because it's low tack. You can see that the finish is coming off this thing. Apparently he likes that. But we are going to go along where these cracks have been. Some of them have been glued before. We just want to get outside of them like that a little bit. And if they come into each other, that's okay. We'll just get the whole area like that. We've got this one that's running all the way down the middle. I want to do that one. We're going to be pulling off this trapeze at some point and but there's a block underneath there so we just get a racing stripe right there and 
isn't this really exciting? Anyway, we want to make sure that we just get these gaps wherever it looks like there's one there. And you want to remember, clamping those bracings underneath probably adjusted something. We've got one right there. Like so. I'll be looking at the back as well. And then we got these two little ones right up. We'll put one there and one right there. Now, I am going to moisten this up just a little bit with damp. It's just water. Wherever I'm going to do one of these. I want to put the binding tape on before I do that because if you don't it won't stick but you remember the suction cup trick um, if you just put hide glue on here and then just leave it sit you're gonna have a lot of work to do if you take a suction cup and push down and pull up what's gonna happen is the same force that pushed it down and created the suction when you pick it up it's going to pull the glue back out so i also want to wet that a little bit like so and then i'm going to take my hide glue which i've warmed up and i just want to come along very lightly like so we don't want to make a big mess anywhere between the tape like this Okay, just like so. I like these glue bots. Everything comes back down, levels itself. And then I'm gonna have, again, a damp cloth, got a little bit of water here. I'm gonna wet that, and then I'm gonna start and tilt this at the edge, and then I'm just gonna push down I'm not going to pick it up at all. So I went into both of these areas. When I get to the end, I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm going to do that. I don't stop until I'm past there. See, same thing here. If this starts to get a little sticky, I'm going to put it back in the water. And this one goes down to the tailpiece, so I'm going to start under the tailpiece and push down. And then the last one, of course, is up here, like so. Then, I'm just going to leave it alone. And um, once it's done, we'll just peel off the tape, take some light sandpaper, see if there's anything sticking up. There shouldn't be. I've had good luck with this. And I think we'll have these cracks and everything stabilized here. It'll be time to put on the pickups. All right, guys, we have one of the pickups in. Turned out pretty good. Um, we've got the surround that holds the pickup. Um, that is held to the body by these four screws. Now, I didn't want to just put four screws in the body and call it a day because I'll work loose. You know how Troy drops his guitars and things. So I put this surround. I showed you how to make this. It is attached to the body in six spots. And then where the surround is that holds everything and makes the adjustment up and down, those screws actually go through the metal before they go into the wood. So this will be nice and solid. Now I do have a little tip for you here. When you're using these springs, I'll tell you what, these Gibson Springs, these are the the um, the bolts that hold them down. And they go in there like that, you know that. And then the spring is sits on here. I will tell you what, these springs are strong. They're certainly not ballpoint pen springs that you just click. And when you're trying to put this all together, you virtually have to turn this upside down uh, because the surround doesn't have uh, the cutout for the tag that holds 
the screw, that right there. The hole here in the surround that I made is um, what accepts the screw and let or the bolt and lets it adjust up and down. So when you're compressing these springs, every time you're using your fingernail and it will shoot halfway across the room. So what you want to do is you want to have these little pieces of tape. You can even tear them smaller than that. All you want is something that when you get the spring compressed, you want to do this in a place where you can find the spring if it flies off a of magnet, so it's handy. But once that spring is compressed, you put that little piece of tape on the threads and then once you get it rigged to where you can screw that in there, then you're good to go. But there we are, one done. Got the right combination of Puritan Mine Road metal and some rust and some Canyon Black and some Chick Flick Teal. All right, we're gonna take this old trapeze because it doesn't match the gold package. We're gonna replace it with one that does. And I want you to remember, this guitar has been acoustic. It's never had a pickup on it. That means the strings need to be grounded. So what I've done is taken a piece of this yellow pushback wire, pushed it through a hole I drilled in between all these holes here. It comes out. I've stripped the end of it, made a loop that wraps around. It will go into the bottom hole of there. It will make contact with this. It will ground the strings. That way I can run it to my input jack, which, by the way, how many times have you seen one of these? They go in the end here and they're held there by simply friction. So I guess you put it in there and because it's held sideways, your strap holds tension on it. Well, if you're bouncing around on the stage and trashing around and your strap goes slack for a minute, this will pop right off your guitar, crashes to the ground and cracks. So we're going to fix that and take care of a historic problem. You know these things. Every guitar has got them. They mount on the side over here. This is thin wood. Something's cracking. This is coming loose all the time. Forget all that. We put in an input jack that's heavy. Listen to that puppy. It's an input jack and a strap button. It will go right here to replace this. We need to drill this out a little bit, but I'm going to do that. I've got the wire run already up here. Once I get that done, we're going to put, put a potentiometer here on this thing, solder this up, and it will be ready to make some noise. Okay, guys, we talked a little bit about this a uh, strap button a little bit ago. These things are scary to me, so we're going to take it out now. Got a gold one here. The hole that we need to drill here is about that big, a little bit smaller. And we could just kind of put this one here, but it's going to end up overlapping on that. I don't want to do that, and I'm going to have to drill a new hole. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of relic wood. This comes from such a cool place. The artist will know. The rest of you can guess, but this is like somebody that Alan Lomax and George Mitchell recorded come kind of from a place where they both recorded this person. Anyway, I've taken, this is just a, a branch, a dried piece of wood from the site, and I've kind of belt sanded it down. We're going to put this in here, and then we're going to find that we're going to cut that off right here, and we're going to glue this in here. We're going to leave it exposed so everybody can see, but that'll give us new wood to start uh, drilling our new pickup input jack with uh, a pin end on it that we can put our strap on. tell you what, I got a file that's for actually dressing frets with the strings on it. It's got a very obtuse angle on it. Check that out. And it's embedded with diamond particles. And I, I need to take just a little bit off of that right there. And if I put this tape around, the thickness of the tape will protect anything from happening to the body. But this thing 
we'll get to some wood quickly. It also works on metal. So when I see it, see it showing up here, there we go. Exactly what I needed. Yeah, this is one you want to keep nice and in its case. There we go. All right, artist wants a gold theme, so we got a gold end pin. This is for the other end of the strap. Um, when you put one of these on here, I try to avoid putting them in here or this way. Um, I'm going to put it where the strap comes around and rests on this. You certainly don't want to force one of these in because if you've ever seen a guitar neck that's fallen and hit something, they tend to crack right here. So you're going to want to take a bit. You're going to want to drive, drill a pilot hole. You're going to want to make sure you know where you're at. So I'm going to want to put it about right there again. It's one of these and I've got the bit. It's just a tad bit smaller than the screw. So we'll put that there. The strap will come around and go to the other end where the jack plugs in. So one more tip about this kind of stuff. If you don't know uh, that the drill bits you're going to use is okay, all you do is you get that piece of wood that you got, that cut off, and you just drill. Do that piece of test wood first, and then make sure that this fits here like this. That way you don't make a mistake here. There's only one mistake you make on here. You make thousands of here, but when it comes time for this one, it's bad news. All right, so when I put this this screw in, I'm going to make sure that uh, it doesn't go in dry. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of glue on it, like so. That way it's lubricated when it goes in, like this. And I'm not going to take my drill and have the clutch set way up where I just drill it in and crack the neck or something like that. So we're just going to, this is one of the things I want to do by hand. I'm going to put this in like so. And then I'm going to run it in nice and easy and make sure everything's okay. Get it in to where I need it to be, then back it out. Then I will put my strap button on it. Okay, last little thing. This is not flat right here. It's kind of curved. It's not really flat anywhere except in here. And this area is too small where it flattens out to house this. So I'm not going to make this tight. You don't want to tighten this up because then you've got something that's riding on a curved surface. It's got a flat end here. I'm going to take one of these little washers. I'm going to put that on here. Remember, I still got that glue on there. And I've already primed this hole up like so. I'm not going to tighten this up all the way. That glue is going to help set this up. But once I get this here, I want to make sure that that can turn just a little bit. Like so. If you put it on tight and this strap starts yanking and cranking, especially with somebody that's rough on their guitar, you are going to end up cracking the neck right here. But this is a good place. A lot of the weight comes across here and um, make sure you can turn this. Um, if you're turning it and the screw's turning, you got to start over. Something went wrong, but there you go. Okay, we're still waiting for stuff to dry up, so I'm going to talk about the bridge here. This is an ebony wood bridge. It is hard wood and it's going to sit about right here. Maybe here. Oh, here's the old marks. No, we know better than that. Remember. I measured from the back of the knot to the 12th fret and that is the mark right there. Now I'm going to take this and put it in the middle of the 12th fret and see where this mark gives us. So we're right there, 12th fret. We're going to put this down, middle of the 12th fret and it's got to be precise. That mark is right here. So I'm going to put this out here. I'm going to go to the edge of the 12th fret. Well, you know the camera is right in the way. Let's move that over a little bit. We're going to follow the fingerboard down. 12th fret. That gives me that mark here. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to put a piece of tape. Notice that I'm putting a piece of tape way out here. Okay. Not far enough out, but right not something you want to mess around with. It's get this one right. You can always cut tape, but 
there we go so it's right there that bridge the center of that bridge has to be on both of those marks okay so I'm gonna put that there put this one here there we go so now we know where this goes now if you look at the top of this guitar and, and feel it going along here it's rough right here and this bridge is a tad high so I can see air right there it's pretty good right here but I can see air right there because there's some rough spots from where that crack is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off I know where this goes but you can see right here and you can hear it hear that you don't hear it over here but right there there's some rough spots so if I don't dress this bridge out what's going to happen is everything's going to ride right there and right there and next thing you know this is going to be cracking again so I got to work this down now little trick I can take a piece of this orange binding tape and I can put it like so I'm going to put it following the foot of that bridge you see that right there I'm going to put that there like that wrap it around like so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side put on the foot of this bridge right here I'm not sure how my camera angle is there we go like so now when I set this bridge up here line that mark up I can take a pencil and if I roll it along here get this trapeze out of the way if I put it along here and follow what the bridge what the top of the guitar is doing it makes that mark right there see that it looks to me like it's not too curvy right there we're over here yeah see this side follows a curve this side flattens out really bad and that is the compensation for this so now I can take this to a belt sander and work along this line I don't want to make this line completely disappear but I can sand this down and get it fairly close then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper I'm going to know where my bridge goes I'm going to set the sandpaper down here the sandpaper will follow it will sit against the curvature it will match the curvature and then when I pull it out it will sand this down the way it needs to be kind of like I did with this cracked brace up here remember that earlier on but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get to that and we'll catch up when I'm done okay so I took that to the belt sander this wood is uh, dark so it stained this but I can see my pencil mark right there and I ground this down where that pencil mark is uniform across there I did the same thing over here now I'm going to lay this down over the mark. And you might be thinking, man, Troy trashes on this guitar. Well, this kind of stuff matters because the more stress he puts on this, the more it's going to be. Now, we can see that that's still sticking up a little bit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 1500 grit. It's very fine stuff. And I am going to put it over here right where that bridge is going to sit okay the stuff is thin it's going to sit right there and i'm going to do another one over here like so i know this is a long video but you know what guys i wish i would have watched a long video before i started making mistakes here okay so that's there like this all i'm going to do is i'm going to work this like so back and forth along here and you can see that if it's sticking up over here the problem is not over there it's actually right here and I've got those lines where the center of the bridge needs to be or where it lines up and I'm just going back and forth like this and sooner or later it will take this down and it will make this nice and flat this wood is hard and so it's not going to give any but you can see that I'm going back and forth here and there's nothing coming up here so this one is pretty much okay but our problem is right there and you can see from the glisten of the light here that I could take that to a belt sander and do a pass on there 
and then get this back down. And when it comes up fairly clean or uniform, clean here, uniform here, the width of this, I'll know I'm right on. And then that way, this is formed to the top. It sits uniformly. There's no gaps and pressure points where it'll blow this out. All right, there we go. Look, you can see that the whole bridge is now touching. Okay, a little bit to go out there, but all you gotta do is measure this, make sure it lines up in the center, and we are good to go. All right, guys, we are gonna remember our good friend we lost this week, Dusty Hill, by fixing this guitar up with the coin from that shack outside of LaGrange. You know what I'm talking about? Okay guys, we need to get down to the fine detailing now. One of the things you always want to do before you get done done is you want to run down the fingerboard and see if you got any dead strings. Now, the way to tell is, if you don't get the do, ra, me, fi, la, whatever, if you don't get that, if you don't have a note jumping up in pitch at every fret, and they stay the same, something's wrong, you hear buzzing. So let's try this. Hear that? Let's go to the next one. Now if you go back down the board on these, you still get a little buzz right here, but here's what to do. You keep going till it you lose the jump up. Hear that? That's the one right there where it starts back up again. It's that one. It is the 12, 13, 14, 15th fret. I got all my strings on. So what I'm what am I gonna do? Well, okay, they got this other gadget besides doing it this way. They got the, something called a fret rocker. You've seen these before. They have three sides. One side's longer than the other. Um, and the reason these are different sizes is because they allow you, as the frets get closer together down the fingerboard, up at the top, they're further apart. So you would set this on here. Uh, up where you can't see and if there's any rocking back and forth when you get down here where they're fairly close together you pick a side like this if we think it's a 15th and I can feel that rocking I can feel it just a little bit and it confirms that it's the 15th fret this one is fancy because it's called a fret kisser I can take this it's got diamond on it like that obtuse angle diamond file I have obtuse meaning wider they make these in short angles where you can go under the string like this and file but this fret kisser will allow you to lay this right here and go back and forth with the strings on by pushing the strings off to the side now I want to show you a little trick here they got these things see it's got a drop down on it so you can wrap it around with a rubber band. You just put a rubber band here. See, so it's got those notches like that. If you're working up here, it's easier to use that rubber band than it is over here. But what this allows you to do is cover up the fingerboard so when you're filing on it, you don't hurt anything. So we're going to go down to this fret right here. We can't put a rubber band on it because this is in the way. And we're just going to take this and work back and forth a little bit and dress the top of that fret like so until that buzz goes away and we get back to our do re mi fa la ti do stuff going on there i don't have the right angle here but you can see that i'm going back and forth and it seems at the top of that is and there's no file on this side, so I'm not hurting the strings at all. But I can come in here off to the side like this and round that off. This is a great tool if you got one fret that's kind of bugging you. You just come in from the other side. And these protectors are going to help your fingerboard a ton. 
Okay, there you go. You got a couple hundred bucks right here. These things are cheap, but if you're going to do repairs and setups, you really need that stuff. There we go. Perfect. Couple minutes of work. No more dead frets. Okay, we're back to the bridge. This bridge has been on here for a day or so, and the guitars become accustomed to the same environment. Now you remember we had a crack running down the tone bar that split off, and we reinforced that on the inside where you can't see this. But this bridge is settling in. We done some sanding on it. But now, before I turn this guitar loose, and while it's under tension and tuned right, and the strings have been stretched, have you ever figured out how to do that? You can take just about anything. It's got a curved edge, and you just push down, or you can pull these out and do it that way. But get your strings stretched. Notice I have not cut any grooves in the bridge yet because one of the last things I'm going to do when I get this lined up and settled is I'm going to pull these strings over the poles on the magnets the best I can. And you got to want to remember, this is why these pickups, one of them usually has the poles wider, and that would be the one at the bridge pickup, because see how the neck comes down like this. But anyway, before I file these in, I'm going to get this bridge settled. So... This side, we're going to take this handy dandy measuring tool here, and we're going to. You can also do this with feeler gauges. We can go along here, and you notice on this side nothing drops in, but on this side, I got some air right there, and I got some air right here, but none, not that much right here. And what do you know? That's right where that crack was. So, makes sense that if I pull this off of here and sand this down where this is at right there that will so we'll make a little mark right there we'll be able to see that on that bridge and carry it over to where the air picks up about right there when I get this off I can take it and sand that down a little bit and make sure everything's good so we're just going to slack the strings off and pull that don't you like that sound we're gonna pull this bridge off all right this is a tedious process but a little bit at a time you don't want to take off too much now notice i got these two pieces of tape here with a mark in the middle that tells me where everything lines up i want to rock this back and forth and make sure it's okay and i also want to pay attention to where my posts are and how they line up and everything get that set down there flat and then again, I just take this and much better. There's still a little tiny bit right there, so which means I got to take a tiny bit there. Tedious, but it pays off. Remember, if you got big gaps underneath your bridge, you're going to end up with cracks and load isolation. It's going to be a mess. Ten minutes here turns into ten hours later. There we go. Last thing I want to tell you here is they, the strings are really low on this right now. The person this is going to play slide, he's going to pick this bridge up. I don't want this bridge floating up this high on these posts and then having the bridge leaning forward. I'm going to give you a link at some point to Ken Parker's stuff. And he will tell you when you load a string, it's not like a violin where you're pulling a bow across this and side loading everything till it pulls into tension and then radiates everything down 
the bridge of the violin this sits up here and it's going to want to pull this as you strum this it's going to want to pull this forward the higher up this goes the worse it is these things are meant to adjust i got the string slacked off a little bit so i can pull this up but i want the artist to pick where he wants the strings to be i don't want to send them in something with action really high uh, that was the that's the worst mistake especially cigar box guitar builders have they build uh, their stuff where the action's so high to start off with nobody can fret so i'll tighten these back up we are good to go on the bridge now okay so now that we've got the bridge where it needs to be this way and this way uh, we're going to do a little bit of intonation once we start getting everything finally set up that may involve tilting this a little bit again to intonate everything the the width of the strings or the thickness of the strings will affect that so anyway um, you want a little hint about what kind of strings are on here there's a set of 12s and there's your big number yeah stop it there we go you're done now when I first started building especially cigar box guitars I would want to file this and sometimes because my action was too high so I would think well if I file these uh, and get them way down into here that, that's a way to solve an action you know what it's not set your fingerboard right build your necks right figure all this out ahead of time don't try to fix it after and then I would use one of these sets of these things here I got this one marked blue because it's a triangle shape it's a triangle shape see yeah worthless um, because here's the way this works if can you see here yeah Here's the, let's look at the bridge this way. I got a little string right here. If I cut a notch in it and make it V-shaped, that's probably pretty good because the string will sit down in here. Now, if I cut a straight slot and that string doesn't get to the bottom here, what will happen is that air gap right there will cause the string to buzz. You don't want that. So, I used to use this triangle file thinking I would fix that. So here's what I did. I got a set of files that are matched to the string uh, thickness, believe that or not. So if I'm gonna use, uh, put a little score mark in here, like so, I'm gonna use the file that's big enough for the string. I'm not gonna use some big thick file and put a big slot in there where the string can slop around or not seat right. Um, I'm not going to cut it really deep, but here's what I got to do, and this is a little tedious. By the way, here's another $125 that you will, these work great on knots. You have to have these for doing knots to set your, uh, the back angle on your knot and to get everything right. But here, here's the deal. How far do the strings need to be apart? Well, I'm going to center this string up to be about the center of the post. Now, it doesn't line up with both. And we'll put a little mark there, a little mark there. And I'm going to take my small file and we'll put it right on that string. I'm going to pull it over a little bit. And I'm just going to do this two, three, four, five. I got a nice, see it drops right in there. I'm going to take the next one now, line it up, do the same thing. I'm doing these graphite marks, like so. See that? Got up to the next file size. Look over the pole. See that magnet? It's right there. A mark is right there. Put that there. One, two, three, four, five. Pull it over. Bingo, I do all of them that way using the next size up file. All right, there we go. We're on the last one. We're going to pull it up. Bingo. Now everything will sit there. I'll tighten this up and tune it up there. Good to go. We will take this tape off of here. And what I will do is, since the finish of this guitar is so incredibly beautiful anyway, I'm going to take a little marker and put a dot right in the middle of that. And whenever you take the strings off an arch top, 
get some tape and do this just like that so you know where that bridge goes. You know, I'll end the section here by saying, you know how incredible it is that you're going to spend about $300 just on that little pile of tools right there on a guitar that probably cost $57 when it was new in the 50s and you can probably buy at a yard sale in the shape this one started off with for probably 125 or 150 bucks. Isn't that the nature of this business? All right, finally, let's talk about the wiring here. Pretty simple. You got two pickups. They have a hot wire and a ground on them and a shield. Um, the artist here is not interested in all kinds of toggle switches and three-way and five-way switches. He's interested in this button right here being cranked up all the way. He runs all of his sound through his pedals. He thrashes on things. He doesn't want things breaking off, getting turned, switched in the middle of it. So, you've got this pin and jack that you use to put your cable into. That's pretty simple. Everything is grounded through this trapeze. There's a piece of wood related to Fred McDowell underneath there covering up that old thing. And all you do is the grounding runs over to here to the pot. Here's a single pot. You crank this thing and it works. It's pretty simple. All right guys there it is. Easy money. Um, sorry the episode was so long. Not sorry. I'm not sorry. You're probably learning what not to do by watching me. But anyway, I want to give a shout out to my friend Troy Murrah, who will play this guitar. Troy, thanks for letting me uh, work on this thing. It's been a pleasure. It's been a learning experience about what goes on in here and how to reinforce it and all that stuff. Um, Troy and his drummer, Tyler Whiteside, I guess he's a drummer. He's playing automobile rims, license plates, but I think whatever they get out of the alley that day. But they're touring around Southern California on any given weekend. They got some gigs at the end of August 2021. If you're watching this after that, hey, McFly, you should have hung on to that DeLorean or whatever it was, and you can go back and get it. But anyway, um, rumor on the street says there are going to be other places we like to be. Shh, I'm in the know. I can't let you know. I don't even think they know that I know that you don't know. Anyway, give me a like below. Get the link to restaurant below. Look at some of their records. You're going to love their music. And I'm going to look forward to seeing this on the road. Let's not forget to go to Chaos Records there if you're down in uh, West Covina, check out the records that they don't have that I bought already that you wanted. Anyway, guys, all in fun. I'm going to drop this off to Troy soon and see what he's going to do with it, and we'll catch up once we got some footage of him trashing this, the restaurant junk pile. See you soon.